So what I'm working on today is changing out my electric aerial. I've already got one fitted, which I did a couple of years back. Uh, but as you can see, this one's kind of failed. Doesn't seem to go back in anymore. Not too sure what's happened. I'm sure it can be opened and uh, fixed, but I'm not gonna bother. It's got a replacement for it, which I picked up from uh, Amazon. Uh, it's supposed to be a bit better quality than the one that I've got now, so hopefully it will be a straight swap. Um, I'll go through showing how to fit this and also how I ran the wiring uh, when I first fitted it. Uh, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, uh, but I will guide you through how I did that and hopefully it will help you guys out. So once you've got the car safely off the ground, you want to undo the inner uh, wheel arch lining. Uh, there's a number of uh, eight mil uh, bolts spread across the whole of the inside. So just simply undo those and you can pull away the lining. There you go, quite easy. Let's undo this plug. All right, just a couple of cables to undo and then it can completely come out. Uh, one is your earth cable and the other one is the actual aerial cable that goes to the head unit. Uh, earthing point, I use this point here. Which, are, which is also used for the bonnet earth strap. Uh, as you can see, mine's broken off, but that's quite a good point. Uh, and the aerial cable goes off inside the car through the bulk, uh, which I will show you later on. All right, let's get the uh, scuttle out of the way. Right, might be a bit difficult to see, but the actual cable for the aerial run through a grommet uh, back against the bulkhead. Um, let's see if I can get a light on there. I'm not sure it's going to be very difficult to see. Uh, you can just make it out behind the pollen filter there. Um, bit of a pain in the arse to get the cable in and out of there. The best way I found was to um, use the original area cable that will be there in place. Um, just uh, electri electrical tape some uh, cables to it which will give you power and signal for the aerial um, grease them up and then push them through the bulkhead towards uh, the inside of the car and then um, you might want somebody on the inside of the car to try and feed uh, the cables through because the actual cable itself comes out from the bulk um, and it doesn't go directly to the head unit itself it kind of wraps itself back around and then goes over that way so it's quite difficult to get the cable back through a uh, bit of grease lots of patient patience uh, get your hand right up inside the um, dashboard with the um, under trays removed and you should be able to get to it um, that is how I did it Right, so that's the old module out. Um, hopefully the new one is the same length. I thought we were gonna run into a bit of trouble with the arch liner, but um, no, that looks pretty good. Um, the only thing that I had to modify on this one, which I might need to do the same on this one, is this top piece here. 
Uh, there's not a lot of space on the actual wing itself on the inside. So what happened was that when I fitted this, the aerial didn't sit nice and uh, flush with the wing. So what I did was, um, if you can see on this one, that there is a piece of round bar which I um, chopped up and put over the, the top of this. Um, so that just acts as a bit of a buffer between the wing and the aerial. Uh, I then wrapped it in some uh, chemical resistant uh, tape uh, just to stop any sort of metal to metal contact, uh, avoid any sort of rust. I'll probably have to move this over to that aerial, hopefully it will fit. Um, and then we could just do the, do the reverse of what I just did now and put everything back together. All right, let's try a little swap over. Let's get this off. And by any luck, it will just slip over. Oh, perfect, which it does. So now we can just do the reverse and uh, put this back into the car. Okay, it's time to get the aerial back into the wing. Uh, just to show you here, this is where I've mounted the bracket that you get with the uh, aerial, just gives it a bit more um, stability. The actual nut that I've put in place on this stud um, is the nut that is used to hold the rear parcel um, shelf, um, is that kind of thread, it's almost like a self-tap kind of thread. So let's get the aerial back in. As you can see it's quite fiddly getting this back on only because I'm not able to use all the brackets that I got with the aerial uh, again they don't fit inside the wing uh, if I can just get a few turns on you can always move it around into the position that you want Doesn't look so bad. Let's try and tighten it a bit more. All right, let's fix it from underneath and then I can tighten that up and that hopefully should be it. Right, it seems to be nice and tight at the top, just hand tight really, just to see. Test it out before I give it its final tighten. Um, from underneath, everything is there. Uh, the, the lower brackets being uh, put into place, uh, cables being plugged in, I'll tidy those wires up once I test. The actual aerial just to make sure it works uh, and just the, the wiring wise the the red wire i have wired um, to a fuse live um, so even if you do turn the ignition off um, once the signal wire has uh, cut power you will still have main power to the aerial so it will still go back inside uh, the wing even with the ignition off uh, which is handy because then you don't need to wait around for it to go back in before you take the key out the ignition and walk away um, so let's see if it works before I tidy it all up. All right, let's give it a go.
perfect. And let's turn it off. Great, time to pack it all up. Right, that's everything packed up. Let's give it one more go before uh, call it a day. Perfect. Bit noisy, but um, I'm sure they're all like that. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hope this helps.